Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to perform logarithmic regression in R. So logarithmic regression is one of several different types of regression. In this series of videos, we've covered simple linear regression and multiple linear regression. And logarithmic regression allows us to create a model to make predictions when we have a rapid decay or rapid growth in our variables. So let's take a look at some data to try and understand what it is that we want to do with this data set. So I'm loading a file. The file associated with this video is a CSV file labeled 104. Uh, don't forget that this file and all other data files plus R scripts used in this series of videos are available in my GitHub. You'll find a link to that in the information section uh, beneath this video on the YouTube page. So let's load this file in and display the contents of the file, which I'm loading it in and reading it into a vector called tree growth. So now when I print that vector, let's take a look at it. And we can see uh, that there's just two, two variables in this. We've got age and height. So we've got age in years. So this data represents uh, uh, over 11 years. And we've got the height of uh, new trees uh, over that period of time. So it's not immediately obvious what the relationship is here between age and height. So I need to visualize this and I'm just going to do it with the plot function. So I'll do a simple plot of my tree growth vector. Um, you can add in the labels, headings, and so on yourself in different types. I'm just going to do a simple plot here. And when I do that, we get a diagram over on the right-hand side. If we can zoom in on this, we can see that there's a very, very clear relationship between age and the growth, the growth in height in meters of trees. So we, for every year, we can see how much the trees grow. And we can see that there's rapid growth over the first six or seven years. And then it starts to slow down and ease off as the tree, trees get older. So there's a very clear relationship there, but it is a curved relationship, not a linear relationship. So we couldn't and shouldn't use a linear model here because a straight line through all of that would not give us um, an accurate model with which to make predictions. So for example, if I wanted to determine what the height of a tree would be after 6.5 years, I'd like a model that would allow me to um, go up to the curve, work my way across and determine what would the height be after 6.5 years. Let me remove that, but I'll keep the smaller one in view over on the right-hand side. So our logarithmic model then, in the, uh, we can see here in line 11, I've got the model worked out here in the common, in a comment. The logarithmic model is that y, which is our dependent variable, that's the one we want to predict. So we want y in our case here is height in meters. So we want to predict what would the height in meters be using this model here. The model is made up of three parts. A, the first part, um, A represents the expected value of y when x is 1. Then we add that to b. b then is the expected change in y when x increases by a fixed percentage. The log function then gives us the natural log of our independent variable x. So if we know what a and b are, and we can then insert our own value of x that we want to make a prediction. So for example, we want to predict what the height would be after 6.5 years. I would put 6.5 in here, take the log of that and multiply it by a plus b, and then that will give me y, the height. So we need to build this model next. So I'm going to create a model, I'm going to call it tree model, and assign it using the, using the lm function. The LM function is the linear model function, and if you haven't used it before, it's worthwhile going over to the help section, typing in LM, LM in the search, and you get some information about how you fit linear models using this function. So if you haven't used it before, it's always a good idea to, to look it up. Now in this here, I really need to tell it just two things. I've got two variables, so I need to indicate what my dependent variable, in our case height, is, and regress that on the independent variable and take the natural log of that. So the first bit is straightforward enough. So that's my tree growth. Sorry, it's my tr tree growth, not model. Tree growth, dollar sign, and the dependent variable is height. Then, then uh, use a tilde symbol to regress. And the tilde symbol on a Windows keyboard is the one over the um, hashtag symbol. And you can see in the formula above on line 11 that I need to now do the natural log, so L-O-G, so lowercase l, natural log of tree growth, dollar sign, and this is the only other variable that's in there, is age. So we've got our two variables, height and age, in here. We're regressing one and the other uh, to give us the model. So be sure here now that you've got the sequence correct here, we wouldn't put age in first because we put the dependent variable 
In our case, that's height. We put that in first, and we regress that then on the independent variable age. Okay, so let's run this and check it for errors. It's, it's running, and we can see in our global environment area that our model has been created. Uh, but we need to use the summary function of our tree model to um, display the contents of the model. So we've got a lot of output here, so let me scroll up and give myself some room to take a look at the summary. Keep the code um, up above. Give myself a little bit of extra space there. Okay, so we can see our code, and in the call down here, we've got the uh, code that we've written in replication, so we can see what we are regressing on each other. And the key pieces that I'm interested in are, first of all, the estimate column in the coefficient section, because this gives us our values that we're going to put into our model. So if I go back here to my model here on line 11, we can see that we need values for A and B, and these are the first two values here in the estimate column. So let me build the model then using that. So my, my fitted model is, if I replicate my formula from above, Y is equal to A, which is the first value, the intercept value in the estimate column. So that's 1.86051. You can see then that we add that plus sign uh, B, which is the second value, 1.8605 on the log tree growth line. So 1.8605. So whatever, you, whatever your data are, um, it's 05, um, 8, isn't it? Yes. Whatever your figures are for the models that you're doing, you can read them in this order from the estimate. So again, the order that you put your variables in is really important. So to complete this, then, we need to uh, multiply this by the log, and the log function is, L, is ln um, of x. Right, so that's our fitted model um, that we can use based on the estimate column in our output. So whatever your data are, uh, watch out for what the two values there are, and then you can build the fitted model as I have done here. A uh, couple of other things here is how strong our model is. Uh, so the multiple r squared value uh, at the end of the output here, in our case, it's 0.9865. So this is a bit like a correlation coefficient. The closer to the value of 1, the better the model. So we can see here that it's 0.9865, which is almost exactly value of 1. So we can tell that this is a really, really strong model. This tells us that 98.65% of the variation uh, it can be described by our model. And we've also got a tiny p-value here as well, which indicates that our model is significant. So that's how you perform logarithmic regression in R. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.